Hey friends, it's Sean Lamazny, and today I wanted to show you how to work with paths and nodes in Inkscape. Uh, paths and nodes are one of the things that Inkscape does incredibly well comparative to other applications that uh, do it because Inkscape is a vector illustration application. It's, it's meant to work with paths. A path is essentially a shape on your screen that is made up of nodes connected by lines. The lines are the path and the nodes are the way that you manipulate those paths. So what I want to do today is I want to go ahead and select this title and delete all that. And I'm going to create some objects on screen that we're going to play with using the node editor. The node editor is this tool right here beneath the selection tool. So the first thing I I will do is I'll choose my rectangular tool, my rectangle tool. I'll create a rectangle. I'll use my circle tool. I'm going to hold down control so that I have a perfect circle. I'm going to use my star tool and create a star of sorts. I'll move it over here. And uh, I'll also make a spiral tool start in the center and pull it out like that. Now, in addition to that, I'm going to use my Bezier tool. Bezier tool allows you to create nodes and even bend paths as you make your shape. And as a result, it's a very powerful way to create shapes. I'm going to create a complete path, which means that I have the ability to fill it with color by going down and selecting the color. If instead I had left it open, there would be no way to apply a fill uh, very easily, or at least not uh, a complete filled object. So that's something to keep in mind. Here we have the pencil tool, so we can go ahead and create a path just by drawing it. And when you let go of the uh, pencil tool with your mouse it finishes that path then we have the calligraphy tool and the calligraphy tool is a pretty cool tool uh, makes different kinds of lines based on this preset for dip pen marker brush brush squiggly splotchy I'll let you see splotchy over here very cool tool and then finally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some text and I'll type out the, the word circle, use my selection tool in order to size it up so that we can see what we're working on. I'll go ahead and get this splotchy calligraphy off. So when you have the Bezier tool or the calligraphy tool or the pencil tool, you're creating a path directly. When I select that object, you can see down here it tells me, Inkscape tells me that this is a path with eight nodes in layer one. If I select my pencil squiggle, you can see that it's a path with 60 nodes in layer one. If I select my calligraphy, it says that it's a path with 187 nodes in layer one. These three things are paths. Now, if I click on the square, you can see that it's a rectangle in layer one, not a path. If I click on the circle, it's a circle in layer one, not a path. Star is a star with nine vertices in layer one. And the spiral is a spiral with 4.7 turns in layer one. If I click on the text, the text is text. It's uh, sans serif 2.7. 0, 0.4 inches in layer one. Right now, the only things that I can manipulate directly as paths are the paths, these three items in the center. The way that I can verify this is if I go over to my node editor and select it. Now, if I select one of my paths, I get these lines connected with these dots. These dots are called nodes, and the lines make up the path. I can manipulate these shapes just by grabbing and dragging them on my page. 
and with nodes you have different kinds of nodes some of them are uh, set up so that there are no handles on them some of them are set up so that as you move the handles it moves both sides of the nodes and really that's determined by the type of node that it is so if we wanted to add to this path we could double click on this line and it creates this new node that can be manipulated just like the rest as I stretch out the handles it changes the shape more dramatically let's say that I wanted this instead of being a uh, node with two handles that move in concert let's say that I wanted to make a corner here I would select that node and come up here to the contextual menu from the node editor to where it says make selected nodes a corner and now when I move this other handle you can see that I can make a very fine point I can move the other handle independently so you can see how that would be useful if you're making a logo or something like that same thing with our pencil line if I with the node editor selected come in here and move a node it moves independently If I come in here and move a node it moves independently if I move a portion of the path it curves as you would expect right finally with the calligraphy tool same thing you can grab a portion of a line or a node and you can create whatever kind of shape you want very powerful tool now let's go ahead and get rid of those paths by using the selection tool to create a rubber band selection and hit delete on your keyboard and they're gone I'm going to move these four objects down using the arrows on my keyboard after selection if I select this rectangle in layer one and then select the node editor I don't have the ability to change the curve of the sides I don't have the ability to do much of anything except resize that rectangle and if I grab this round handle you can see that I can round off the edges of the corner very useful if you're working with uh, squares or rectangles in your design and you want to have rounded corners uh, of course if I want to manipulate it in other ways all I have to do is use the selection tool if I select it once I have these resize handles if I click on it again I have rotation handles you can see that there is a crosshair in the center and what that allows me to do is to rotate around that crosshair so cool tool but it's not a path and so in order to make path like changes like we did with the other objects we have to convert this object to a path so I'm going to select this object with the selection tool and then I'm going to go to the path menu and choose object to path now when I go to the node selection tool and select this object the nodes all of a sudden are there and I have the ability to manipulate the edges and I have the ability to manipulate edges over here I can change the nodes to different kinds I can uh, of course always apply different colors etc but with the node editor in order to be able to manipulate shapes that you've created or spirals or stars uh, you have to convert them to a path first so that's no longer our square when I select the circle I have some things that I can do with the node editor such as creating a portion of a circle uh, changing uh, creating an arc on the end of it I can also uh, resize squish etc but I cannot manipulate it like a path until I go to path and choose object to path and when I do that when I convert a rectangle into a path or a circle into a path or any of these other objects in the paths I no longer have the default editability of those objects so you're not going to be able to simply round the corners using the round corner handle on a rectangle after it's been converted to a path because it doesn't have the special designation of rectangle anymore it's just a path it's just a shape but when you convert a shape uh, object into a path you have some dynamic things that you can do 
in order to manipulate the shape, the resulting shape. Same thing with the star. If I go to uh, path, object, path, all of a sudden, all of my spokes, etc., are able to be manipulated in ways that they were not before. And that's not to say that it's better or worse. It depends on what you're trying to do with it. If you are trying to uh, change the shape, as opposed to using a rectangle or a circle or a star, then converting it to path all of a sudden allows you to do that. You also have the ability to remove nodes. So for example, let's say that I didn't want this diamond portion on here anymore. I could just select these three nodes with the node editor, hit delete on my keyboard, and you can see that it goes away. Sometimes when you do that, when you delete nodes, some odd things happen to the shape and you may have to use the subsequent handles in order to reshape that to be more like a circle or whatever it is. You also, of course, can zoom in to the path and use the node editor in order to have a better view of what you'd like to do, like making a perfect circle. I'm going to hit 5 on my keyboard, which takes me back out to full view. And finally, we have a spiral. We're going to say path object to path. And that spiral is no longer a spiral, but rather a spiral shaped path, both of which can be useful in their own right. But if you're trying to make manipulated shapes like this, it really helps for it to be a path. Now. I'm going to delete those. And text also is not a path by default. So uh, what you can do is you can create a path from that path object to path. But note down here, it now says group of six objects. Uh, I personally, when working with text, especially if I'm working on a logo or something like that, don't want to work with these letters as individual paths as part of a group. Usually I want to be able to manipulate them separately, but you can make changes to the letters now. Couldn't do that before it was converted from a piece of text into a path. Also, like I said before, once you change your text into a path, it no longer has any kerning function. You can't change the font. You can't do all the things that you typically do with text in a design application like you would um, in, in Word or any other tool. Once it's converted to a path, those are no longer letters, they're shapes. And so if you need to edit or if you need to add letters or remove letters, do all that while the text is still text. And then once you're ready, you can go ahead and convert it to a path and you can do all kinds of interesting things. As I said, this is currently a group. If I use my selection tool and select this, it's a group of six objects. In order to ungroup, you can go into Object, Ungroup. And what that does is it makes all of these individual shapes that you can manipulate individually. Move them up, down, around, rotate them, etc. resize them. So of course you can see if you're working with uh, letter forms in order to make a logo how important the path tool would be in order to have all these individual letters have their own shapes fit into each other etc. Without converting it to a path you just can't manipulate a font to do something like this unless you have a font editor which is another whole thing. So I really would recommend using something like Inkscape in order to make these modifications. So I hope this all uh, helped you in order to understand the importance of the node editor and paths and nodes in Inkscape. And I recommend you go into Inkscape, go ahead and drop some shapes and some paths onto your uh, page and manipulate with the node tool because it's a very powerful tool. Have a great day. Thanks for your time. Bye.